Welcome to my tutorial on how to edit star pictures. Today I'm gonna take this draw file and turn it into an amazing, amazing picture just like this one. A thing that you have to know is that whether you like to edit your pictures usually or not, if you're gonna shoot the stars you absolutely have to edit your pictures pretty much to get the best possible result whether you like a very natural look or a very you know artistic look so today I'm gonna show you both styles both artistic and both relatively natural but in any case you will get so much more detail out of your star picture if you edit them so quickly some information about this photo taken with the Canon 600D and the Canon 18 to 55 kit lens so really really you don't have to have an expensive camera or anything like that in order to get great star pictures obviously if you have a full frame camera and a faster aperture then your kit lens will provide you will end up with a better quality but overall you will still get a really really cool picture even with this very very basic gear to settings ISO 6400 80 millimeters you always want to go as wide as you can so you can bring up the shutter speed without having any motion in your stars f 3.5 which really isn't that you know big but because I only have the le kit lens this is the widest it will go and it definitely is okay and 20 second exposure time now depending on your gear you might get a little bit of a different settings obviously that also depends on the amount of moon you have on the sky and a bunch of other things but I'd suggest you if you go out in the field just try these settings right here if you have, happen to have a kit lens and you know then see on the back of your LCD screen on the back of your camera whether the picture is good or not you need more exposure you know so let's get started with editing this is actually the Milky Way you barely be able to see it but once I'm done with editing you're gonna be able to see it really really well so first thing you want to do in any case is bring up the contrast that really really helps to give the whole you know stars a better structure and to be more visible so I would suggest suggest you to bring that up fairly a lot maybe not a hundred but just something like 70 and then you want to bring up the highlights in order to for the stars to be really bright and shiny now usually I would make sure that nothing in my image is clipped but in the star photos I mean there's really not any detail in the stars visible so if you just um, clip the stars it really really doesn't matter so shadows just gonna play it around with that and maybe even bring that a little bit further down then the whites I'm definitely gonna bring up the whites I don't want to make it too much otherwise it completely blows out the picture but just so we have a lot more you know dynamic and overall brightness in the stars and especially in the Milky Way right here then I'm gonna bring down the blacks that really helps to give an additional form of contrast and you know help to differentiate the stars from the background now you don't want to do this too much otherwise you can't even see that there are stars anymore it just looks like some white dots so you want to bring that down until you like it best and then another thing that you definitely want to bring up is clarity that really really gives you so much more detail in the stars I mean it shows the stars better so that's definitely a good thing and in terms of vibrant saturation not gonna touch these tools right here then exposure you could bring up that or bring it down depending if you've over or underexposed your picture but in this case I really think it's fine how it is and color temperature is a very very big thing here because you probably do want to adjust it just because it's really difficult to get the right color temperature in camera by the way be sure to shoot draw definitely have to do that in order to get all of these heavy adjustments and raw is definitely the way to go so in this case I definitely suggest you to bring it more towards the blues because if I bring it to the warm tones it really looks terrible so whether you like it blue or not for now I definitely suggest you to bring that into the blues how much is of course up to you but I think I go I'm gonna go quite a lot into the blues 
and make it look very artistic, something like this. So that looks pretty good. And in terms of tint, now here you can see I have quite a lot of magenta tint and that makes the whole picture look a little bit more saturated and a little bit more blue. So you could bring that down and get a relatively natural looking image or you can bring it right and get a pretty you know, bluish tone, and I actually think that works better here for p my personal preference. So that is pretty cool, and by the way, if you don't like this color cast as well, another thing that you can do is just bring down the vibrance, just make sure you don't overdo that, otherwise it look like a black and white picture but you can bring that down a little bit. However, I really like the amount of color in this picture. I really like the artistic look, so I'm just gonna stick there. Then tonal curve is a very important tool as well. Here you definitely want to bring up the highlights as well. The highlight slider down here will just affect the very highlights, which in this case are just the stars, and they will just make them seem even brighter and even more clear in the sky. So that's definitely really, really cool. Then the rest of the sliders down here, you just want to play around with these and stick with whatever works best. I absolutely love these light slider, bringing up the slider right here. It creates so much more dynamic into the picture and the darks. I mean, if I bring down the darks, it really seems a bit too much, a bit too abstract almost. So I think I'm going to bring let the darks at zero and the shadows maybe even slightly bring up the shadows. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Then HSL tool, I mean, really, you could play around with that and just, you know, fine-tune your hue, but I'm just not gonna do that here for this picture, just to keep the video a little bit shorter. Split toning, I would not suggest you to add any split toning for a star picture, but a very, very important tool down here is the detail tool. And the first thing you have to add is noise reduction. Now, depending if you're, for example, shooting a sky, a star sky with an A7S, which has insanely good ISO performance, you might not have to add as much. But if you really have a very low-end camera with not that great of an ISO performance, you will end up with a ton of noise, just like this right here. So you definitely want to bring the noise reduction slide to the right quite a lot. And here, you really can decide how much you want to add. As you can see, it completely changes the image. It makes it look so much more clean. It does get rid of some of the very small stars, but I really think that's a trade-off you have to do, and it might be even a good thing, because it makes your image look a little bit cleaner, not just in terms of noise, but also because there's less clutter of stars overall. So I'm gonna bring that to the right, and just see how much I wanna bring it to the right. I would not suggest you to bring it all the way to the right, otherwise you will end up with a very almost blurry and kind of picture that almost looks like a painting. So I think around 60, 70 here works pretty well. And another slider that is extremely important is the color slider. You just want to bring that straight away to 100. And this will just get rid of so much of the purple and green color noise uh, that you especially can see more than in any other picture in star photos. Once again, here at zero, here at default from Lightroom, and here at 100, it makes the picture look so, so much more clean. Then sharpening, Lightroom adds 25 sharpening by default. Now sharpening, believe it or not, it actually can make your picture look a little bit sharper, even though you really just have stars. But if you want to add sharpening, definitely be sure to bring the mask in to the right, so you only sharpen star f the stars and nothing of the background, because if you sharpen the background, that will just introduce noise. Now that's really a thing that you won't even notice that sharpening until 
unless you print your picture and I actually have printed a very similar picture to this also taken with a Canon 600D and the kit lens and it ended up looking really good actually now of course if you go super close you will see you know these textures of the stars but it actually looks really really good from a little bit for for example like one feet away by the way, it's like a 15 by 20 inch print or something like that. And so we're done with the detail tool here in Lightroom. And the next thing would be lens corrections. Now, you can overjump this step right here. Um, but I'm still going to remove distortion here. As you can see, it gets rid of distortion and vignetting. And vignetting definitely does not work here for a star picture so you want to make sure that you bring that down to zero but distortion removing definitely is a nice thing but you probably won't even notice it that it isn't there then color here you could remove chromatic aberration and yeah i mean just press it why not it might get rid of some of the purple fringing on these stars but that's really you know, it's not that big of a difference as if you would, for example, have a hill in a landscape or anything like that. But that said, it doesn't do any harm, so why not just press it? Then effects here, this is actually a tool I really, really like and I think is really cool for star pictures especially. I am going to bring down the vignetting here. I don't want to make this too much. By the way, this is completely optional, you don't have to do it but that way you get a little bit of vignetting and make the center of the image a little bit brighter and, you know, seem a little bit more interesting. So I'm gonna just add a little bit of vignetting here and I think that looks pretty good. Grain, definitely don't want to add any grain, that just makes your picture look like terrible. Um, so I'm gonna go straight away down here to camera calibration and the main thing you want to change here is profile. So here in camera profile I usually just go through all the profiles and just stick with whatever looks best and you know this will just change the color and the highlight ratio, the contrast ratio of your picture so I definitely suggest you to go through them and if there's anything you like better than the standard then just stick with that and I definitely saw some profiles that work better than standard here. Let me just figure out which one is the best. This is really kind of too much. This doesn't look bad. Hmm. Camera portrait. I feel like this is the best so far. Yeah, I definitely do like camera portrait. I absolutely like this look a lot. And the very last adjustments in the global adjustments of Lightroom will be the primary color slider. If you have the time, play around with these. If you don't, then just leave them out. They won't have that great of an impact in your picture. But even though you here can pretty much just see blues and purples, if I for example bring down or up the green slider, it will still change the picture as you can see here. So there's really no set tactic to it, um, I, it's really depending on your style and on your picture. So I'm quickly gonna speed up the footage of me editing these um, primary color sliders and I'll see you in a second. Okay, so I'm back after playing around with these sliders. Here's before profile and before sliders, and here's after. I mean, it's not that big of a difference, but it definitely is visible, and you know, it can't hurt to play around with these settings. So now we're done with the global adjustments. And there's really not that many local adjustments you can do. Actually, before I go into the local adjustments, let me just go back to basics adjustments and just play around with these once again, because if you add so many different adjustments down here, you really can sometimes end up changing something that you don't really like. So it is sometimes a good idea to just go back to these adjustments and just play around with these a little bit more and see if you wanna add or decrease something. For example, in this case, I feel like even adding more lights really, really helps to give dynamic to this picture. 
So I think that I actually might have added a little bit too much is contrast here because if you add too much contrast it really sometimes can get rid of some detail in your picture especially in star pictures so I think I'm gonna bring that down just a slight bit something like this and I do like this better. So now obviously the main part the main interest of this picture is this um, Milky Way right here so you might want to crop your picture depending if um, there's something for example that you don't really like or just if you want to put more emphasis on a certain area on your picture so in this case I think I'm gonna go with a almost panoramic crop a vertical panoramic crop and just try that and hmm I'm not right, really sure. I do think I like the crop and really how big the Milky Way becomes, but I feel like there's a little bit of vignetting missing, so I'm gonna go back down to effects and just add some additional vignetting, bring the midpoint a little bit more towards the center and just fine tune that. And I really, really like this result. Actually, a thing that I'm gonna do lastly is even add a little bit more vignetting with the adjustment brush because the vignetting tool really just adds the same amount of vignetting in every single corner so sometimes you can end up with some corners being a little bit too dark and other corners being a little too bright so if that is the case just grab an adjustment brush bring down or up the exposure and make sure the feathers to 100 very important in order for your picture your adjustment to look very natural and to just paint over the part you want to additionally darken up just a little bit yeah, I definitely think that works a little bit better. Maybe get rid of some of the vignetting on the right. And I really think we've ended up with a really cool picture. Now obviously, keep in mind, we shot this with a Canon 600D and a kit lens, which really is a $500 lens um, camera combination. And the result we've got from that is absolutely amazing, if you ask me you really couldn't ask for anything better, especially if we compare it to the raw file right here. Here's the raw file and totally different. I mean, this just is so much in superior uh, to the edited picture. Now, whether you like editing or not, as I said before, you definitely do want to edit your star pictures to get the best possible result. But I admit this is a very, you know, artistic look, very blue, but if you want to go for a really natural look, you can, for example, bring down the vibrance a bit and maybe bring the tint more towards the greens and you definitely end up with a much more natural looking picture rather than a very artistic that I was going for before. So I want to thank you very much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please take a second to give me a thumbs up. That really does help me out a ton and I really do appreciate that. Also be sure to subscribe if you would like to see more videos just like this one, other Lightroom videos and other photography videos in the future. Right now I'm uploading fun photography video every single day of the week. Once again thank you very much for watching, I really hope you can get some awesome star pictures and I want to wish you a great day or night rather if you're shooting the stars and of course take care.